In this episode of Let's Talk, Denise Baker talks about her father, who was a sports journalist, and how today, like no other time before, professional journalism is important. I believe from our conversations in the past that your, your, your father was a newspaper man. He was a sports writer uh, for the Pittsburgh Press, and then he was an independent writer. Um, and he was also a commentator for CBS Sports, for the golf primarily. Now, my father passed away 20 years ago in May, but um, he still, um, still a lot of people know him. Mean, he had a great sense of humor, but... Yes, he, he was a journalist um, through and through. And and how did, did did any of how did that influence maybe your life, especially growing up? Well, you know, my, it's funny, but my parent, my dad, always used to send me articles out of the newspaper when I was in school, and I did that to my kids too. And if you recall, it was one of the tasks for you pen pals to send an article from your local paper to your pen pal, because I think that. Your choices in those articles are very revealing about you, as well as revealing about the small town of which the newspaper came from. But I think now more than ever, it's so important that people subscribe to newspapers. I think that here in America that our First Amendment is in a very precarious place right now, freedom of the press. You know, we we are... Um, so I think it's very, very important that... Um, that we keep these journalists in jobs and subscribe to these newspapers and allow that freedom of opinion and information to get out there. I think it's very important. Now, I mean, one of the things that's quite interesting, I've been talking to, to some uh, retired journalists or people that are fairly close to retiring. A lot of them initially hadn't uh, a strong education, but got educated through being journalists and actually practicing as, as a writer. And then mm -hmm. my generation, we started to have to have qualifications in the subjects that we right. were going into. And now it's got to the point where you need a PhD to do anything almost. It's, it's kind of gone really, really crazy. Oh. And yet the, so many people are writing blogs and write, but they're giving their opinions. They're not necessarily, well, I, don't, I, I, I feel that there isn't the same kind of journalistic integrity uh, that there once was. Is that, is that no, something it, you see as well? No, no, I agree with you. And I'll tell you what, back in the 80s, I can't remember what it was called, but there used to be an, a, a rule or an amendment here in the United States from the government that you couldn't put anything on TV or in a newspaper unless it was sourced by at least two places. And when that came up for reevaluation, Ronald Reagan chose not to put that in there. And that really changed especially radio and commentary, but now with anybody can do a blog, anybody can say anything on the internet. We're, we're overly informed, but it isn't always factual. And I hate to say fake news because, you know, it makes me, but, uh, but yeah, I think that um, we have to be very careful as consumers of news to take the time to check facts. And a lot of people don't want to do that. But um, but that's why I, I think people should subscribe to the newspapers because they are required to check their facts, you know, and um, and we need to be respectful of the work that they put into that, you know, just the research and the work. And so I think it's very, very important to support journalism as we know it. And blogs are fun and it's great to read people's opinion and things go viral, but you, you have to be careful about what you absorb and you have to be able to check facts. Well, I mean, one of the things I think is fairly common is that um, the information that gets put out is very emotive. So you get very fired up and then you mm -hmm. find that you react to the way you've been fired up only then to find out, well, actually, that wasn't quite what it was. If you read between the lines, it wasn't quite what it was what it said as it was, and you've, you've forced an opinion 
through your reactions that wouldn't necessarily be the correct one to 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 follow um and i know from um i mean as an academic someone who who's done a lot of writing for you know reports and things um you're always having to find multiple sources to back up the arguments that you're creating yeah. and you're also trying to be impartial and not give opinion you you're, you're meant to just give you know facts or or based on the information that you've actually researched, which is the way that I felt that journalism was supposed to be, having come from a, a filmmaking editing background, you know. From, right, from but you know, another great example, having been over there and with groups, and we always do the black cab tours in Belfast because, you know, I was fascinated with the history, you know, of the troubles. But having done that tour many times with different groups, it was interesting. Uh, sometimes I could tell if the cab driver tour guide was Catholic. Sometimes I could tell he was Protestant. But at the end of the tour, if I had to say, hey, are, are you Protestant? There's the guy that did the job. Yeah. Of, you know, and that and that uh, and that has to be difficult. But as a newspaper person and a journalist and also as a documentary filmmaker, because really there's a lot of journalism in documentary film work that you have to really be able to try to be factual and you can't help you have to put your heart in it because you have to be passionate about what you're doing but so there's a fine line there and you know um, but it's uh it's important to do the work We have more on the way, so please subscribe to this channel and check out the link below if you'd consider becoming a patron to help us keep making more content. Thanks for watching.